What's up, YouTube people? It's Oxen here, aka Glenn. What's happening? Today, I'm actually going to start talking about mid sides processing in Ableton Live. Mid sides is a recording technique, and it's used in um, studio recordings where you use two mics to record the same source. One is sort of a direct signal, and the other one is sort of an indirect signal and then you mix them together so that the indirect signal sort of fills out the sides uh, the left and the far left and right and then the direct signal is in the mono track basically so it, it, it exploits basically the mono stereo signal uh, and can be used for really interesting imaging uh, and so today I wanted to show, I read an article about um, how to r sort of emulate it and if you dig around on um, you know, sites, here's this guy here. Uh, is there a way to take a mono stereo track and, and hook it into a mid side setup? And so there's a lot of different, uh, you know, things you can do. But if you read this stuff, it's pretty complicated like creating utility tracks and switching the phase and doing things like that. So it's totally doable, uh, I think, with a native uh, live uh, plugins. I haven't messed with it too much. Uh, also note that EQ8 in Ableton has a mid-side mode, so you could use that for processing as well. Uh, and if you want to EQ mids versus sides. Uh, but yeah, so um, definitely check that out. Uh, I'll post this link in the YouTube video, uh, you know, the other info area, so you can check it out if you just want to go with 100% live. But today I'm going to use um, a plugin that does processing of mid and side channels. Uh, and I'll cover that in a minute. It's by the uh, folks at Brainworks. It's called Digital V2, uh, which is pretty handy. So um, I'm just starting with like a standard MIDI track. I've named it Source, and I'm going to use a pretty cool synth from Yuhi uh, called Ace, and then just like a default mono patch. And just so I can get something playing without uh, doing too much work, I'm going to go over to Ableton's plugins. And grab a couple arpeggiators, or at least one, um, and get some sound going with this. So um, I'm just going to hit hold on both of these and then see what happens when I press any key. Alright. Not very interesting, but. So we have a basic arpeggiated bass track. It's not much, it's mono, it's cool. You know, I could go into bass uh, and I could mess with different presets, right? But they're all pretty much mono. So I'll stick with this one just because it's easier to probably hear me over that, so as much as you probably don't want to. <laughs> uh, so the next thing I'm gonna do is create a couple of audio tracks. So I'm going to call this one mid, I'm going to call this one sides, and I'm just hitting uh, command R or Mac to do that. And then I'm going to highlight both of these guys and do command G to group them. And then this group I'm going to call mid sides, right? So what's basically happening here is you have an audio track on in a group, two audio tracks, mid and sides, and then you have um, the output of both of these being summed to this mid side bus, right? Through uh, Oxen or the uh, Ableton grouping. So um, basically, what you want to do here is pan your mid to the left and your sides to the right. Um, and this is 
only you only want to do this if you're using like a mid-sized processor that processes left and right channels and that's kind of what the brainworks one does right so if i pull in the brainworks plugin this digital v2 is really nice right so it looks intimidating but really what it's doing is it's giving you sort of a mono section and a stereo section and this is a, a five band eq with some shelving five band eq with some shelving some nifty little macro uh you know bass shift present shift kind of high low shifts in the eq so it's basically a, a tool a dual channel eq uh but the neat thing that separates this one is it has this um mid sides uh record mode right uh you don't hear anything now because nothing's really going on there right uh but but that's just the setup so we'll think about just remember that that that's on this mid side thing and that's kind of what makes the magic happen so now what we need to do is basically mute that track still sending signal but now we need to get the signal over to these groups um so basically you want to do audio from source right and I like to do post effects just in case you know I ran an effects chain on this source channel and here if I put something after ace uh, it would come in after that so um, and I'm getting that and I, I need to set this channel to monitor All right so now what's happening you can hear you can you can see it coming through the left channel here but if you notice on my group it's because of the brainworks it's coming out as basically a mono right so if I solo this, same difference. This is actually coming from the source track, and then this is coming from the group output. So now I need to do the sides, right? So uh, source, and then post effects, and then ah, nothing's happening, right? Gotta go to monitor in, and now you get kind of this weird um, cancellation that's happening. It's sending out on mid and sending out on sides, but as mid science comes in and gets aggregated by the, the Brainworks plugin, it, there's a huge phase shift cancellation. It's like, wait, something's going on here. So that's that's a sign that things are actually working well, right? So um, what you want to do with the sides channel now, think about it, right? Going back to the mics, one mic is a direct mic pointed, like let's say it's just pointed straight at the snare. And then you have a mic right on top of it that's kind of pointed left, right? Like a, like a cardioid or a condenser uh, pointed left, right. It's got a figure eight pattern going, picking a reverb off the walls. So you kind of want to think in that in that sense, right? You don't. There's no limit to what you put on this track. It's just make sure that your sides track isn't the same signal as your mono track. Is kind of what it comes down to. So I'm just gonna throw some effects on here, and I'll use the Nableton or the native Ableton effects here. So. Now you're starting to see the signal creep back in to this mid sides bus, right? One thing you want to remember to do on your effects because they all sort of run in line as inserts, you want to set this guy all the way to wet. So now essentially what we have is we have a sides channel that is 100% reverb uh, and, a, and a mid channel which is basically the same as the mono, right? And now you have a nice spatial sort of application of reverb. Uh, which is sort of the goal of reverb, right? To add space, so it's really nice, uh, good imaging uh, for that reverb. And then there's no limit to, to what you can do here, right? So, like I said, you can I'll just go and grab one of the auto filter um, modulated filter of our reverb which is kind of cool so you're like yeah okay that's fine whatever but I mean the difference between that and this is actually pretty cool and that you don't have to do too much to your uh, to 
your sides channel to make it really just kind of pop away from the from the kind of to cancel that phase modulation, right? So if I do or that phase cancellation, um, sorry. If I do, uh, let's see, delay. how this delay has really fattened up the sound, right? Pretty cool. And all it's doing is just shifting kind of when that's playing. So like, we solo the mono track and get the mono signal, which is the same as this one, right? Same as the source. Uh, but then you solo this one. And you're in sort of this delayed state. Mix them together. Have a nice image-oriented effect. Right. You can see it's kind of getting pretty burly on the on the highs here. So kind of what you can do with um, with Brainworks is you can monitor the input. So you can like set your overall gain to be slightly lower, right? And then notice on the right here, it's also giving you balance between left, center, and right. And we're looking pretty good there, and we, we're looking at a positive for correlation. So this is all like a like a nice stereo image, right? What's cool about this is you can auto solo, right? So if I just listen to solo mono, that's mono, and if I solo sides, sides, right? So maybe I want to cut some of the fat signal that might be coming through still on um, the side channel, which I can do here, right? Just really focus in on some of these high rattly sort of um, resonant pops uh, that we're getting here, right? And that's going to leave more low end space for your mono signal. And then on the on the mono signal, I'm gonna just do some bass shifting, which is just sort of a nice uh, EQ application here, right? And then I got a really fat mid low end and a nice sort of spacious uh, resonance focusing on the on the higher frequencies in the side channel. Uh, pretty cool. Um, you can determine like when where the side channel kind of crosses over, right? Some really nice sort of fine tuning of what's going on. So here you can hear it's predominantly the mono track and just slightly some sides coming in. Serious control over the stereo image. Up here there's a stereo width. Alright, so you can push that as much as you want or decrease it, right? Collapse it down. Um, pretty neat. So that's pretty much it. Uh, there's not much else to really show there. I mean, one thing you can do is, um, you know, obviously this is all being arpeggiated, right? So I can kind of go back and basically play performances, right? So um, it's pretty cool. The other thing you could do with your source channel is if this, you know, this is just a MIDI, it's just source, right? So it's it could be MIDI, it could be audio. You can run through, you can have this setup, right? Let's say this was an audio track and you wanted to put in a bunch of loops and kind of hear this effect on vocals, hear it, if, hear it on um, guitars, anything really. I don't think there's anything I, I've, I've heard uh, signal-wise that doesn't really come to life when you pass it through a mid-side thing and and really this is about it's for me it's less about mic emulation I mean that's that's great uh, you know uh, I don't have a lot of mics so I could totally emulate uh, what's going on there you know I can throw a nice IR or a convolution reverb on the side channel and sort of emulate the space that that a you know uh, a condenser might might give you uh, from the room so to speak in in a mid-side setup but Really, the, I mean, a lot of these synths, you know, like Ace is a mono synth. Uh, any mono signal that you get, like your bass that you're recording, 
or you know a vocal track or anything those are all going to obviously benefit from this and there's other plugins out there like stereo maker and things like that um, but this is really cool because you can basically just do whatever the hell you want on your mid channel and your side channel uh, effects wise and really sort of differentiate them from each other and, and experiment with cool imagery type thing and then one other thing you can do because this this um, because this uh, uh, mid side effects uh, plugin takes from the left and the right channel and kind of combines them you could throw this plugin on let's say you have a drum machine on a MIDI track and it's a stereo drum machine right so uh, you can toss this uh, processor on there throw it in mid side mode and then go into your drum machine and start you know panning things hard left and hard right to kind of decide whether they're going to be in the center or or the sides um, so that's another little nifty trick which I can show later but this is sort of the gist of it uh, it's really simple just create a couple of tracks group them together so that their output can be summed I mean I could have created another track that took you know that where these both of these tracks actually send audio to the third track but Ableton makes that easy for you by grouping so it's I did just did it that way uh, but yeah if you have any questions or comments please feel free otherwise enjoy peace